Um, yeah, so I just wanted to uh, touch base with you guys um, regarding the emails that I sent um, about the IB exams. So hopefully you all received um, those emails that I sent out. Um, but at this point, IB has canceled um, the exams for May that we were originally supposed to have. Um, but let me start by saying that we still are not super clear on what that means, except that we know um that the exam is going to be canceled okay so um what that means is that uh we're still going to use your ia to determine how you're doing um and like how you'll do in the class so if you have not done your ia it's extremely extremely important i also reached out to you about that um so if you're in that boat please communicate with us because this is very 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 important now more than ever can i clarify um, something real quick sure so the May testing is canceled, correct? Mm -hmm. But the November testing is still on as far as we know? Yes, but we don't know right now. So that's the thing we don't know about. Because you guys are 11th graders, you're in a little bit different of a boat. So there's a chance you may just be able to retest. Um, but that's something I'm working with IB on right now. So I don't have 100% guaranteed. All I know right now is that we have to get the IAs turned in. And then we have to... Um, use your coursework to determine your uh, predicted grade. So these are all the mm -hmm. things that are happening based on your class and it's happening like regardless. So as long as you're doing what you're supposed to be doing in the class, you're in a good place um, <clears throat> for that. So it's really important that you like continue to do the work and stay on top of things. Um, and Mr. Dunn and Mr. Tout are working very hard on doing that on the back end. Um, but we're not really sure what, if you guys will actually sit for an exam, okay? so. Um, Full disclosure, we don't know a ton about that. We're still trying to figure it out. But if you're in that boat where you have not turned in your IA, or if you have other things that you need to work on for the class, make sure that you're communicating with your teacher so we can get that in so you guys are in the best position. Does that make sense? I have a question. Sure. Um, what if you turned in your IA, but you, um, you got a bag, like you didn't do very good on it, but you're ahead like with as far as work? How would that impact everything? Like, would it? Can I answer that? Yeah. So uh, it's about one, one quarter of your overall grade is from your IA, and three quarters of your overall grade is from your EA. Now that the EA has been um, postponed, I, I think that's probably the best term for now to say postponed, um, your grade will come that that EA grade is going to come from what you're doing in class. So okay. that three quarters is going to come from essentially your classwork grade. Okay, so that's- uh, And tests and everything else. So whatever you have on manage back is a good clue as to what your essentially EA grade would be. It's not exactly, but that's where we're headed. Okay. Yeah, for sure. And as we know, once we know more, then we'll be able to give you guys more. But it's just really important that you guys just like keep plowing through it and going with it. Um, because as Mr. Dutton said, if you don't take the exam, your classwork will then kind of become a bigger portion of it. Question. Yeah. Um, what's the name? What's the name of it? Yes, with the uh, president said that he tight shut down like a federal shutdown, does that mean that we're not inside school for the next? Uh, for more than three weeks. So um, the district has not made any um, decisions or announcements regarding that outside of past Friday. Um, I will say totally like, in my opinion, I don't think that we'll be back on Monday, but nothing has come out yet. Uh, I know that the district is working hard on what that could look like moving forward. And I'm guessing that it's going to come out very, very, very soon, but nothing has come to us yet. Um, I have been communicating to people that um, there has been a lot of talk about April 30th being um, the soonest that we would stop like social distancing. And so that has been talked that I've heard that from the governor and, I, and we've heard that from the president, but as Ms. Schneider said, we, have, we don't have any official word yet. I am personally planning lessons and I'm planning Zoom sessions and everything else as if we are not going back before May. Um, yeah. 
So I think it's in your best interest to plan accordingly. Uh, and if we end up going back earlier because it's safer to do so, then that's an, that's an awesome bonus and we get to see everybody. But plan on not seeing folks. Yeah. Plan on not being in school. And um, I think Mylon asked about the OSTs. So you guys also, so you're aware the OSTs have also been postponed um, and have been waived. Um, so just make sure that you guys are uh, looking out for updates on that because once we do get back to kind of like normal and get back to school, we're gonna try to get you guys um, to take those especially if you need them for graduation. Um, so just kind of stay up to date on that, but we definitely are planning for that moving forward as well. Okay, uh, great questions. Do you have any more questions? Uh, oh, uh, Akia just asked, how's this gonna affect us going into senior year? Um, I don't know if I can field this um, any better than Schneider can or Tout can, but um, uh, we, there's, that is going to affect you. Yeah, Mr. Tout said in so many ways. That's gonna affect you in a lot of ways. Uh, we don't even know all the ways yet uh, because uh, we don't even know about this school year yet. Uh, but everyone is really concerned about making sure that you have all of your credits. Um, what they did with the current seniors is that whatever grades they have um, right now are basically locked in so that the current seniors can graduate. Um, and if for whatever reason they were failing a particular class, um, they, they were being given options in order to make sure that they got their coursework done so that they could graduate on time. Um, we, we have no idea what next year looks like, what next school year looks like. Um, here's hoping that it is normal. Um, and if it is, then we won't have a lot to worry about. But uh, as far as the rest of this school year is concerned, that's why we have this schedule. That's why we're trying to make sure that uh, folks have an opportunity to um, be on these Zoom sessions so that you can continue with your classwork, especially with these two-year HL classes where uh, you know that you have um, your internal assessment, your external assessment coming up. Uh, we don't anticipate those being um, pro, uh, um, postponed or canceled uh, because that would all be happening next year, so next school year. Um, so right now, this doesn't have an impact on your senior year, but understand that everyone involved is trying to really uh, be super conscientious about that. Um, Can I add on to that, Mr. Dunn? Oh, yeah. OK. So the other thing that I will say is that, um, and obviously, I'm preaching to the group that uh, maybe just not hear this so much. But um, as you guys know, in the IB program, a majority of your classes are to your courses. So it's really important that you guys are continuing to take advantage of these online options that we're giving and continuing to keep up with your coursework because that's what's gonna keep you on track for next year, right? Eventually this is gonna settle back down and everybody's gonna be kind of back at school and you don't wanna be in a position where you're having to play catch up on top of applying for colleges, on top of doing the SAT, ACT. Um, I know several colleges are, are changing kind of like what their admissions will look like. There's some stuff from a SAT, ACT. If it will be helpful for you guys, because I don't want to take all of Mr. Dutton and Mr. Tout's time, um, I can set up a Zoom chat for later this week with me and Dr. Flowers that we can kind of discuss all of this and kind of put it out there for you guys. Is that something that will be helpful for you guys? If you want to just like answer in the chat. But, okay, perfect. So I will do that and I will, um, I'll look at your guys' schedule and fit in a time this week and then I'll put it in the 11th grade classroom announcements and we can set up a time and we can talk about SAT, ACT, quick plug, you should have gotten your SAT test scores. So make sure you check your college board for that. Uh, but we can talk more about that. We can talk more about what testing will look like, um, the college options, because there are a lot of college options um, that are changing. And so we'll do all that as well. So I'll try to shoot for like Wednesday or Thursday for that. I'll talk with Dr. Flowers and then I'll post that for you guys. Um, so it'll be helpful. But just if I can give you one piece of advice, take advantage of everything that your teachers are doing because they're working very hard to make sure that you stay on top of it. And if you put in the work, it's gonna help you in the long run.
Any other questions? These are great. Okay. Does this mean that the, um, all college, not tours, but like if you sign up to take a tour, like you and your whatever people you want to go with, or miss the yeah, thing Holy Family, go with, does that mean that college tours can't be done because of the flattening the curve thing? Yeah. Uh, well, no. Go, go ahead, Ms. Schneider. Yeah, so everything um, from college standpoints have been, has kind of been moved to online. So I would encourage you also to take this time to do virtual tours of your schools because they have done a great job kind of emphasizing that. But actually going on to campuses, many, many, many schools have canceled everything through May, including their graduation. So colleges are pretty much shut down at this point um, for the most part. So definitely um, communicate with schools if you're interested, but check out their website and do their virtual um, stuff. And we could do some work um, like college planning. We could do that. Uh, as we go on through the rest of the year too. So that's something that we can kind of work on. And then once we um, like meet as a group, can kind of decide what you guys want and what will best help you and we can do that. But as far as visits, I think all that are kind of like X until at least uh, June. And Mizan, thank you for your question. Um, my plan for the review, um, Mr. Tout and I have been talking about what we want to do for the review for the EA. Uh, I already started setting that in motion. And so our plan is for you to create a portfolio uh, so that it, you have all of the information from the entire year that uh, would serve you best to study before the EA. And that way, uh, if you take it in November, you already have your little uh, packet slash portfolio that's all ready to go and you can study from that and be prepared for mm. the EA. Uh, in November, if that's what ends up happening with with everybody, that way you're, you'll already be prepared, and it will be a class grade, so that you'll get credit this year for having put that together, and you'll have that prepared for you when you, uh, if you, and when you take it in November. Uh, any other questions? These are great. Okay, so um, keep the questions coming. We'll answer them as we go along. Uh, I know a few of you just got in here. Um, so feel free to email either uh, Mr. Tout or me or uh, open the, make sure you have the chat open. Uh, we are having a lot fly by in the chat. Um, I can see a few of you are uh, individually chatting with each other and that's okay. Uh, keeping up with each other, that's good. Um, so here's the, here's the plan for this week. Um, today, we're starting uh, a solar energy activity. And because of all the great questions, I think we'll probably be continuing it tomorrow as well. Uh, we'll also be reviewing subtopic 7.2. On Wednesday or Thursday, depending on how this, week's, how this week goes, we'll do lecture 7.3. And if you miss that or anything else, know that everything gets recorded and put on YouTube. I send out the link either later the same day or the following day so that you can view the whole session on your own time. Um, and then Thursday and Friday, we're gonna be starting what's called the Generate Game. Um, so we are going to be playing a game remotely. Uh, I'm really looking forward to that because I think it's something that um, you'll get a lot out of uh, and it's, it's something that you'll be able to do in teams. And I'll tell you how we're gonna actually have teams on uh, Thursday and or Friday. So that's the general plan for the week. Any questions about that? All right, so this is just a reminder, those of you who were with us the week before spring break or were with us uh, last week, you know that this is a lot of what we talked about, talking about establishing a routine now that you are in a completely different routine, thinking about the different things that you should include in that routine, making sure that you're reaching out to others because not everybody is connected right now. Um, I know there's a lot of folks who I'm seeing on these Zoom sessions, but there's a lot more who I'm not. 
Uh, so make sure that you're reaching out to them and seeing if other people just need somebody to talk to. Make sure that you're keeping up with your studies. As Schneider and I and Tao just said, it's really important that you take advantage of these Zoom sessions. Uh, your teachers are uh, working really hard putting together these sessions um, on, on really a totally different schedule. So we're, we're trying to do what we can to meet you where you are. Um, and then make a schedule for yourself. Take some time to figure out what you're gonna do every day so that you don't just sit there and end up bored, right? Uh, there's no reason to be bored. You, you've got lots of things that, that you can do, lots of work that you can do, but also lots of fun things that you can do. So make sure to make that uh, good schedule for yourself. Yesterday I woke up at 3 a.m. and I did a puzzle until 2 p.m. That is an interesting routine. Thank you. Um, so my one has a, a great question going over question sets. Um, and that's actually what we're going to do in that uh, review session. So right now, this is what the schedule looks like. Uh, this may get pushed a little bit. Um, but for the next four, four weeks, as we said, we're anticipating being out through April 30th. Uh, we don't know that for a fact, but we're anticipating that. And so this is generally what the schedule looks like. So you have some idea. All right. So right now, I want you to go out to Google Classroom and go ahead and open up number 149, Solar Energy. I got a question. Go ahead. Um, how is the, the test going to work? I see this topic has been reviewed, so it's just going to be online. That is a great question. Uh, Mr. Tat and I need to talk about that, about the best mm -hmm. way to do that um, yep. and I think I think there there's a couple of ideas swimming around in my head Amon is stepping up his nose game I just wanted to make sure that was well, well done Amon yeah um, and you know there, there are a variety of different things that we can do including um, having a, a quick like oral exam if students wanted to do that uh, we could have um, yeah, there, there's, there's a lot of different ways that we can see where you're at. Um, but we are open to suggestions. Uh, we're trying to get creative about it, just as you guys are getting creative about uh, how you're looking on the video Zoom. All right. So in Google Classroom, make sure you've got number 149 open. And as you open it up, start to read through it, I'm gonna display it for everyone in just a minute here. So, so this activity is all about solar energy. The point of this activity is to get you to actually make a calculation about how many solar panels and how much it would cost for you to install those solar panels on your house, apartment, wherever you are, uh, in order to be able to account for the amount of electricity that you use on an annual basis. So, so that's our goal, that's what we wanna do. Um, and in doing that, we'll find out a lot about how solar energy works, about um, our current electricity bill, 
about how much electricity we're using, uh, about how much electricity costs, about how much solar energy costs. I see that I was cutting in and out a little bit. Um, so we're gonna learn about a lot about electricity and solar energy and everything else. Um, so make sure that you're looking at what I'm looking at, which is, which is this document here. Um, I'm going to skim through this here. I do expect that you're reading through it, but there are a couple important pieces here. Um, we know that all other forms of, all forms of non-renewable energy are going to eventually run out. Um, we know that we have somewhere around 50 years of oil left. Um, we know that we have maybe 100, 150 years of coal left, but we know eventually it's going to run out. Um, so renewable energy is a key to that sustainable future, all right? Um, some people don't like renewable energy because it's ugly, because it's noisy. Um, sometimes we're talking about the environmental impact like hydroelectric dams can have a, a major impact on rivers and lakes and on the life that lives in those rivers and lakes. Uh, but generally, the overall impact of these renewable sources is much smaller than fossil fuels or nuclear. Um, now, the big drawback to renewable, and that's what we're going to be addressing today, is how available it is and the economics of renewable. So the cost, all right? Uh, some forms of renewable are not readily available. So we know that in Cleveland, um, if you're getting the same weather I am, which I'm, I'm, I'm thinking is probably true, it's cloudy right now. And it's cloudy a lot of the year. So we know that solar energy is not as available in Cleveland as it is in other places. But it may surprise you to learn that people can absolutely have solar panels in Cleveland and end up uh, reducing their energy bill significantly because of it. So even though it, it's cloudy a lot of the year here, we can still have solar panels. Uh, wind energy is very available. And in fact, uh, the city of Cleveland is looking to actually put all sorts of wind turbines out in Lake Erie and create that renewable ele uh, electricity source. So in this activity, we're looking at, as I said, the availability and economics of solar and wind power, uh, pri primarily focused on solar power in this one. Um, we're looking at maps of available sunshine provided by the US government. So if you go back here to the assignment, you see that there is a solar energy map. Now, you're probably going to end up being able to see more detail on your own computer or own device. Um, but this is the solar energy map that we're talking about. And that will help you determine what kinds of solar energy we can get here. Uh, and there's also a link to this home energy calculator. It's labeled APCO that we're going to be using. And we're going to use that in order to determine how much electrical energy you you actually use before we estimate the cost of using the renewable energy. Um, what we could do is monitor your electric meter for some period of time. Everyone has an electric meter. Or we could review your electrical bills. Now, if you want to go through and you want to ask a parent, hey, where's the latest electric bill? And try to find out about how many kilowatt hours of electricity you're using, then you can do that. Um, but there are some downsides to that. It doesn't tell you about where that electricity is coming from, where the sources of that electricity are. Um, and so what we're really looking to do is trying to estimate your usage of electricity in the future. All right, so we are going to use the home energy calculator from Appalachian Power, and that's the one that is linked. And the calculator allows you to make an estimate of energy usage. Um, you're going to need to know some information about the number and types of appliances in your home. When we get to number six, make sure to change the temperatures on the thermostat, and I will show you how to do that. 
for number eight, make sure to click on add more appliances to add everything in your house that exists. And I'll show you how to do that one as well. All right, hopefully I'm back. Um, but for number eight, you'll, you'll add more appliances. Um, and then here are some instructions for what you're going to do after you complete that analysis. So let's go to the analysis first. So I'm clicking on the APCO link. Oh no. All right. I'm going to send out a new link. So if you change the OH to, I think, Tennessee, TN, it should work. Yeah. So in that link, if you change the last two letters to TN instead of OH, that'll work. I'll go ahead and add it to Google Classroom. So if you refresh the activity on Google Classroom, you'll see that link. And this is where you're going to end up, should look like this. So let me know if you're having Let me know if you're still having problems with that link. I, I changed it. So again, if you're on the old link, it says OH at the end, change that to TN for Tennessee. Believe it or not, we can actually select Ohio. We just can't do it from here, apparently. That's weird. So, <clears throat> Because we are residential, we're figuring this out for a residence, which is your house. We want the residential tab. And then you're going to go to bill analysis. This is the link. This is right now all the defaults. This is what you will be using, the bill analysis. This is what you're going to be using to get the data in order to fill out the tables in the activity. If you go to my home, this is where you're actually going to put in all the information about your home. So since I've already done this, it already knows I'm in Cleveland. But what you can do is just start to enter Cleveland. Don't choose Cleveland, North Carolina. This is under my home. This is under my home. Yep. So residential, my home, location of your home. Um, don't bother with the advanced house details. This isn't all that important. If you are in an apartment, then you can click on small house. Um, my house has three bedrooms and two bathrooms, and we are at 1,500 square feet, which is basically on the edge between small house and medium house. If you have four bedrooms in your house, then you're probably looking at a medium house. Uh, if you have your friends over for big parties, and then you invite even more friends, and then even more friends come over, uh, and then by the end of it, you can't even keep track of where you are, you're probably in a large house. So I imagine that most of us are gonna end up as small or medium. I happen to own my own home. Only check that if you know that your folks own their own home. So for number five, uh, I'm not sure which one I have. Okay. 
Uh, we'll get to number five in a second here. Thank you, Adrian. Um, make sure you select how many people are in your home. And for this one, for number three, if you are, if you have somebody who's only in your home some of the time, uh, still count them, um, especially on the quarantine. Um, you, you'll know exactly how many people because nobody should be coming and going. Um, for number four, you're not necessarily going to know this, but um, if, if your house stays really warm in the winter and really cool uh, in the summer, then likely you're at some insulation. Uh, if your house is pretty chilly in the winter because you're, you know, you lose heat through a lot of different walls in the ceiling, um, I doubt it. Almost every home here is going to be insulated, but you could select this. Um, if you feel really comfortable most of the year, then you might select thick, thick insulation. Uh, most of you, I would just select some insulation or don't know. All right, heating and cooling. So most of you are going to have uh, either natural gas with central air or natural gas without central air. If you have a gas furnace in your house and then air comes out uh, the walls, that's natural gas with central air. If you have a gas furnace or a boiler or you're in an apartment, typically what happens in a lot of apartments is that you have radiators on your wall. If you have radiators, then most likely you have natural gas without central air. Um, very few folks have electric heat, but you can also ask to see what kind of, what kind of heat you have. But again, if in doubt, I would say uh, if you have air that's coming out your walls and that's how you get heat because there's force of air coming through, that's natural gas with central air. If it's radiators on the wall, like big long things that get hot, that would be natural gas without central air. Does that answer your question, Adrian? Yes, thanks. Thermostat settings, number six. Make sure to hit the, um, the pluses and minuses um, in order to control where you keep the heat during the winter. And then if you have air conditioning, control where you keep the temperature in the summer. We do not have air conditioning. And so I just max this out. I max it out to 88 degrees um, because that's unfortunately the, the biggest number I could find. Um, and we keep our, our house around 69, 70 degrees during the winter. Number seven, um, no one around here has electric tankless. Um, you would probably know if you have a gas tankless. A tankless water heater is something that provides heat to water on demand. That means if you turn on a hot water faucet or you turn on the shower, it kicks on at that moment. It heats up the water that's passing through it and it only provides hot water that you request. It doesn't keep water in a tank. If you go down to your basement, or you know that there's a big tank and we're, we're talking like these tanks can be, you know, as tall as we are off the ground or taller. Most likely you have a gas water heater. Some of you may have an electric water heater. If you're not sure, put gas water heater because that's what you most likely have. Uh, but again, this is something that you could quickly ask ask a parent, hey, what do we have, gas or electric? Uh, most folks around here are on gas because gas is cheap. Any questions through number seven? All right, number eight, 
go through and make sure that you have the appropriate number of appliances in your home. Um, refrigerators, freezers. This means freezer aside from a refrigerator, beside the re freezer on the refrigerator. So we have a deep freeze in our basement and that means that we have one freezer. If you do not have a deep freeze, then this should be zero. For washer and dryer, if you have a gas dryer, some of you will have a dryer that operates on natural gas, then select electric gas. If you have, both of them are electric, or you do not have washers or dryers, make sure you change that selection. And really make sure you go over here. There are a lot of other appliances that you could have. If you have a second refrigerator, make sure you add that in here. Um, a typical refrigerator is 14 to 17 cubic feet. Uh, if you have like a industrial sized refrigerator, then that would be large or extra large. Um, if you know it's Energy Star, Energy Star is a energy efficiency rating. If it's Energy Star, then select that. Um, if you have a second deep freezer, then add that second deep freezer. You can customize this if you want, but try to, um, try to estimate how many loads per week. If you're doing a load a day in your house, then that's seven loads per week. If you've got two people in the house who each do a load every week, then that would be like two loads per week. We're at, a, we're at somewhere between five and seven. Um, Clothes dryer loads probably should be the same as the washer loads, unless you're putting a lot on a clothesline. Uh, for the kitchen, if, if fire comes out of your uh, stove, out of your range, then that's natural gas. If it just gets hot, and uh, it gets red and it gets hot, that's electric. Um, if you have a dishwasher and you know it's Energy Star rated because it has a logo on the dishwasher, then select Energy Star. Otherwise, select electric. When you go to other appliances, make sure that you're adding everything that applies you see that there are quite a few things that you can have, quite a few appliances. Um, desktop computer, laptop computer, um, I don't know, oxygen concentrator, I, I don't know why that's on there. Seems kind of uh, strange, but TVs. If you select TVs, make sure that you change the quantity to reflect how many TVs are in your house. Uh, game console, same thing. Make sure that you change the quantity and that you select the number of hours per day that uh, you or someone else is on the game console. That's not me, by the way. It's not me on a gaming console six hours a day. Mm -hmm. That's a 23-year-old. And six is an underestimate too. Sure, sure. All right, uh, so make sure you have all of the appropriate appliances selected. Mr. Dutton, are you a League of Legends guy? Uh, I don't even know what that is. No, I, I have heard of it, I am not. Are you? No, no, I never got into it. Oh. I used to play a lot of Halo. Y'all should join my uh, Magic the Gathering server. What? Oh, I love Magic the Gathering. For real? For real. I just got into it because my sister started playing it and I didn't know exactly what it was. So I was like, oh my god. I'm Dang. still on Connect 4. Ah, shoot. The Webkins version? Because that one's so much better. I'm Minecraft. 
And we got Minecraft. Oh, I was just playing Minecraft earlier, but then I had to shut it down because I realized that the music was playing, so I got stressed. So <laughs> I'm sorry. It's the true confessions. All right. Um, so moving on from gaming, uh, what type of lighting do you have? So if you have a lot of the old bulbs where they have a filament that you can see inside of them, they get really hot to the touch, then you're going to select few CFL or LEDs. CFL means compact fluorescent light bulb. And those are the ones that are either spirally or sometimes they have a dome to them like this. Um, and if your house has some of each, like 50-50, then select this one in the middle. If your house has almost exclusively CFLs and LEDs, then select this one. LED lights are more expensive, but they are way more energy efficient. Um, you can touch one when it's on and it will just be warm, barely warm. Um, <laughs> I know everyone's going to be selecting all of this, right? I mean, it doesn't even give you an option to select more than one pool. What the heck is going on? So if you have a pool, if you have a hot tub, invite us over after the quarantine is done. Yes, please. And once you are all done with that, once you've filled out everything, which I know for some of you is going to take a little bit longer because maybe you've been working on this step here with the other appliances. After you're done with that, click show analysis. That's when it will calculate everything for you. And Excuse me. decided to not show me the analysis, but I can go to bill analysis. And this will provide me with the numbers that I'm going to need in order to fill out the activity. So I'm going to flip back to the document. And I wrote in here the instructions for what I want you to do in order to enter your numbers. So you're going to click on bill analysis and then electric analysis and get the breakdown of the electricity use. I'll show you how to do that in a minute, but I also want you want to show you the table. So down here is the table you're going to be filling out. So you're going to be filling out the kilowatt hours for each of these categories and also the your bills column. These are the first two columns I want you to fill out. So we go over here. We're under bill analysis, electric analysis, and then cost. And then you can click on show annual cost table. And it will give you the breakdown of these various categories. Some of you, you're going to see some different numbers in here. Some of you might have some other categories. Make sure that you're matching each category. So mine, I have heating kilowatt hours of 387. And so I'm going to get that over here. And I have $31 in heating bills, and that's on an annual basis. And I put that 31 in. Now, if you're feeling super fancy, you can try to select everything, but it's also going to get all of this. So it makes it a little bit more challenging. But if you're a copy paste wizard, you can find out a way to do this. So go ahead, get those kilowatt hours and the costs in there. Into this table. 
it's probably easiest just to type them in, but you could just copy and paste it into a spreadsheet, right? And then you could individually copy a column. Yes. That sounds like a great idea. That's one option if you guys don't want to type them indiv individually. Um, so Alanis said that heating didn't show up for um, Heating won't show up on this if you don't, if you didn't select anything for the heating section. So look again at the My Home tab. Um, if you didn't make a selection under My Home, under Heating, then you won't get that row. Um, also, if for some reason you don't have the fuel analysis tab, that's because you didn't select anything that uses natural gas. In my house, I don't have anything that uses natural gas. And so if I did this according to what's actually in my house, I would not have this tab. So I'll give you another. I'll, I'm going to introduce the last part. And, and then you can have as much time as you need to fill in that table. So the last part I wanted to go over was how to enter the uh, second two columns of the table. So if you go to fuel analysis, you will see the same breakdown, but likely you're only going to see heating or, or water heat here and you see that this is measured in what are called therms. Therms are a measurement of quantity of natural gas. So for heating, I use 734 therms. So I'm going to put that under where it says fuel and therms, 734. And I will also take the cost, which is $1,263, and put that under my bills. Now, my goal for you today is to have this section of the table filled out. We will continue with this tomorrow, where we will fill out the last two columns figuring out how much carbon dioxide, and then determining how many solar panels are required in order to replace the electricity that you use on an annual basis. Any questions about that? Mm -hmm. So, so let me remind you about the schedule. I know that most of your teachers have reached out to you. Sorry, I just meshes that to Mr. Tout and not to everyone. I can, well, I'm sure, yeah. Um, oh, is Ms. Vasquez trying to make a quick announcement? Are you on here? There's lots of folks on here. Would you like to make a quick announcement, Ms. Vasquez? Hi, Ms. Vasquez. Good morning, Ms. Vasquez. Hi, good morning. Sorry, I was um, handling some mom things really quickly. Um, good morning, guys. I miss you guys. Um, just wanted to pop in and say hi. Um, I don't have any announcements. I know, um, check your email from Ms. Snyder regarding your extended essay. Um, she sent everybody, sorry, here's Sesame Street in the background. Um, she sent everybody an individual email um, based on your status update. So if you did not finish your first journal for your extended essay, um, which is talking about your meeting with your advisor, please do so, because that is still a deadline that um, she is um, making sure we 
stay on top of it so that we're pacing really well for turning in your EE in the fall. Um, but yeah, that's all I have for you guys. The majority I have is for my wonderful sophomores. Um, so enjoy your break, or I guess not your break, but enjoy keeping safe and sound and listening to whatever jams you're listening to. I'm on right now.